Imagine taking an elevator to space. A team of researchers from Shizuoka University plan to develop a miniature space elevator to connect Earth and the International Space Station with a cable. According to the Mainichi Shimbun, the researchers plan to develop an approximately 10-meter-long high-strength steel cable, with carbon nanotube being considered as the primary material. They also plan to release a pair of satellites that will connect with the cable and would measure around 10 centimeters on each side. The space elevator would also be made up of six oval-shaped cars, which would be about 18 meters long and 7.2 meters wide. A camera would also be attached to the satellites, which would record the elevator as it moves in space. The researchers expect the elevator to travel up to 200 kilometers per hour and carry people as well as cargo shipments into space by 2050. However, the researchers worry there might be problems such as the elevator colliding with space debris, meteorites, or even the transmission of electricity from Earth to space. More tech stories. Solar window blinds can block and harvest sunlight. A California startup has designed window blinds with solar panels that can block out sunlight while harvesting solar energy from it. Each slat in solar window blinds is equipped with monocrystalline solar panels, which can harvest solar energy. The blinds can also track the path of the sun's position and automatically change the angle of the slats to optimize its absorption of sunlight. The company claims the blinds are able to generate up to 100 watt-hours of energy for every square meter when mounted on the outside of a window, or half that amount when mounted inside. Although the slats can automatically change their angles, the blinds can also be manually controlled via an app. The company is hoping to raise $50,000 from Kickstarter in order to mass-produce the solar window blinds. Rain or shine, future solar panels may be able to generate power. Scientists in China are producing solar panels that can produce energy from the last source you'd expect when we're talking about solar energy, rainwater. In a typical solar panel, photons from a light source knock electrons free from atoms within the panel, and the action generates a flow of electricity. Although solar power technology has been getting increasingly efficient, there's still the tiny problem that solar cells can't produce any power when it's raining. Researchers are introducing a new type of solar panel by adding a layer of graphene or carbon atoms arranged in a honeycomb structure to dye sensitized solar cells. A flexible layer of indium-10 oxide and plastic is included underneath. Graphene has unusual properties that allow electrons to move freely throughout the entire layer. Rainwater contains positively charged ions like ammonium, calcium, and sodium. When water binds to the panel surface, a double layer of positive ions and negatively charged electrons is created, which ends up producing a voltage and current. Tests of the new solar panels have been able to produce hundreds of microvolts, which is small even compared to a standard AA battery. So there's a long way to go before the new solar panels become more widely used, but more efficient future versions could mean big things for the solar industry. Talk to the hand. British telecom company O2 has unveiled a prototype for a new wearable gadget that bridges the gap between fashion and tech. O2 has teamed up with London beauty brand Nails Incorporated to create the Mobile Nail, a wearable tech nail that can be used as a phone handset. The Mobile Nail pairs with a phone using Bluetooth and allows the user to answer a call, redial the last dialed number, or play music. The tech nail is also customizable and can be modified with different nail art designs. Along with the unveiling of Mobile Nail, O2 published its Future of Mobile Life report, which predicts that embeddable and wearable tech will advance to such a degree that the human body will replace smartphones by 2049. A new way to stay cool without using power. Researchers at the University of Colorado in Boulder have invented a special film that can cool buildings without using any power. The cooling film measures about 50 micrometers thick and consists of a transparent polymer, tiny glass beads, and a layer of silver coating. The silver coating reflects sunlight through the plastic, preventing it from heating up the building. The glass beads constantly emit infrared light and heat through a process called passive radiation cooling. The cooling effect is said to be able to keep the internal temperature of a home at 20 degrees Celsius, even when it's 37 degrees Celsius outside. Researchers at Stanford University demonstrated a similar device in 2014. 
However, their technique would reportedly be expensive to manufacture in bulk, whereas the film developed by the University of Colorado team can be produced for around 50 cents per square meter. How Geoengineering Could Cool the Planet Did you know we could cool the planet down with technology? Solar geoengineering specialists reckon technology could cool the planet's temperature by using it to add sulfur to the atmosphere. And that's central to the following ideas. Volcanic eruptions can cool the Earth. This is because they emit sulfur dioxide, a UV-repellent gas, into the stratosphere. Earther reports that millions of high-altitude balloons carrying sulfur may also be an option. But do that and you'll likely get plastic falling from the sky, plus it'll also be very, very costly. Another option, Earther reports, is to maybe use aircraft such as the Stratotanker to disperse the sulfur into the stratosphere, as the aircraft can already reach that altitude, which is around six miles from the Earth's surface. And while it may work, the costs could be high, and we're not just talking financially. Citing a leaked UN draft report on global warming, Reuters reports the organization's climate experts opined that solar geoengineering could be economically, socially, and institutionally infeasible. Moreover, Harvard's solar engineering head, Gert Wagner, told Earther that deployment of solar radiation management tech would be, quote, unambiguous proof of our miserable failure as a species to act as responsible planetary stewards.